Well, in in talking about wide receivers and talking about all that stuff, let's jump into some of your draft talk. Um, so what we're going to do, guys, on uh, Going For It, I, I haven't dropped the name of our, our new podcast yet, but Going For It, um, we are going to give you guys a top five. Uh, so we're going to do top five prospects, maybe a little bit of a breakdown where we'd like to see them end up and make these just very digestible. We're also going to throw in a dark horse pick that could be fun. So Mike's groups that he got um, are wide receiver, cornerback, linebacker, and offensive line. So he's going to run us down through some of that. And then uh, we will have new videos with Craig. Uh, he's doing quarterback, tight end, running back, and defensive line. So, oh, yeah. Mike, give me your top five. Let's talk about it. Okay, so we'll start with wide receivers then. Top five, Devonta Smith, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell, uh, Kadarius Toney, and then Rondale Moore from Purdue, which I might have him a little bit higher than most. But he, Rondale Moore, to me, um, is going to be like, and Adam Thielen, like you can throw him the ball no matter what it's glued to his hands and he'll probably get you eight to 10 yards. Like he might not be the guy that's going to burn everybody, but sometimes on a slant, he can take it to the house. Um, so I think Rondale Moore really, really going to be uh, an underrated guy. Kadarius Tony is just out of Florida. He's just speed, man, like speed, decent hands, really good footwork. Um, and then I don't even need to talk anymore on Smith, Waddle, and Chase. Like they are class. Like that's just it. They're they're top top class, top drawer, whatever you want to say. They're the top, um, the three tops, whatever. They are going to be something that's talked about in the NFL for a while, um, as long as like injuries don't hamper their career or anything like that. They are going to be that big of a deal. If you got to pick one of any of these guys to put on your team tomorrow, who is it? If I have to pick one, I like the upside of Devonta Smith and what he was able to do this year the most. But I think I might go Jamar Chase. I think Jamar Chase could potentially be the best all around, but I think Devonta Smith is the most hyped right now. Um, and therefore, that's why I kept him at my number one. And my sleeper, just because I didn't get to mention it, Amari Rogers out of Clemson. Doesn't make sense to be sleeping on a guy from Clemson, considering they're perennial national title contenders. But dude in his sophomore year made a lot of catches that uh, looked like he was already NFL ready. Um, and he still had to go back for one more year of college. Um, I didn't watch everything as closely this year, um, which I think is why he's likely his stock has dipped a little bit. But I think Amari Rogers, second round, third round, potentially, is going to be a steal. All right. What do you got for corners? Uh, so Caleb Fairley from uh, Virginia Tech is the number one. Patrick Sertain from Bama is incredibly, co incredibly, incredibly close. Um, J.C. Horn from South Carolina. Um, Aaron Robinson from UCF is my number four. Um, and... I've looked around that there's actually a lot of consensus that he could be a first round pick this year. So it's not just me kind of blowing smoke. Senior bowl was really good for him. Um, and then uh, Tyson Campbell from Georgia. Um, and then basically it's like three people from Georgia right after that. Like Georgia has a really good cornerback uh, regime hitting the draft this year. Um, so uh, really interested to see how they all end up doing in their careers. But I would think Tyson Campbell's just the best of the bunch. Uh, from the, the, the bit that I've seen. And then my sleeper, I have to do it, is Asante Samuel Jr. from Florida State. I feel like with a pedigree like his dad, he's worth a flyer on if you get an opportunity to take him because you never know. Asante Samuel was one of the best cornerbacks in the league for a very long time. That... That's that is something that's going to be pedigree and also coachable. So I think he'd, he'd be a great pick in later rounds uh, to get on your team. But I feel like you're going to start grilling me on my UCF pick. So I think Antoine Winfield Jr. definitely showed that that pedigree does matter. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where would you like to see any of these guys end up? Where do you think they'll be able to make the biggest impact? Oh. <sighs> I wasn't ready for that question. Um, 
I mean, honestly, I, I, like I want to be a homer and be like, I'd love to see one of them get on the Giants, but I feel like our secondary is actually kind of filled out pretty well um, if we can stay healthy. Um, so I don't really know where I, where I go ahead and put some of them, but I think that um, you look at like teams like the Chiefs um, kind of down the line, they ended up pretty much getting burnt in the Super Bowl by Brady. So I think they could end up potentially using some some young help. Um, you know, obviously Aaron Robinson being the guy that I've probably watched the most being a UCF alumnus. Um, he's he's a lockdown nickel corner for sure. Um, and a lot of people are kind of saying that they think that he's the kind of guy that can step in day one and be your starting nickel cornerback to pay if you draft him. He's very physical, might get him in a little bit of trouble during his rookie year going downfield, but he's a big body and he's willing to put on the pressure on some people. I think getting a guy like that on, say, like the Chiefs or maybe even the Packers um, would end up being something that would be a, a welcome addition and something that will kind of help put them over the top. Um, as for the other guys, uh, my top three, Farley and Sertain specifically, um, those guys are pretty much going to be day one starters walking in there with whatever team takes them. I don't know who else is going to be there. They might not be the number one corner, but they're those guys are likely top both top 20 picks and uh, they'll see significant playing time out the gate. All right. This is the one I was most excited for. And I honestly, when we when we were divvying things up, I wanted you to get linebacker real bad. So when you took it, I was pumped. But give me your linebackers. So my number one, uh, I think you already know what I'm about to say is Micah Parsons uh, from Penn State. Um, Micah Parsons is just to me is like the second coming of Luke Keekley. Um, he is going to be a game general for you. He is going to run everything and he is going to be all over the goddamn field. Um, I think that Michael Parsons could be one of those guys that you look at and say, put him, put his lines like, name up there with, you know, like I said, Luke Keekley as a comparison because it's more recent, but you might go ahead and look at him at the end of his career and be like, man, him and Derek Brooks were just two of the best that ever did it like for what they did in their position. So I really like Michael Parsons a lot. Uh, Jeremiah Owusu Karamoa. I probably butchered that, but I tried my best. Uh, out of Notre I'm Dame. Sure he would appreciate that. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. I tried. I'm not good with this stuff. I'm really white. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, he he was hell of a player for Notre Dame. Actually playing in a conference this year, which you guys should do all the time. Um, so <laughs> that's just my own personal bias. Stop being independent. Um, but uh, no, I think that he is going to be another field general who will be very successful in the NFL. I got Nick Bolton out of Mizzou, Jamin Davis out of Kentucky, and Jabril Cox out of LSU filling out my top five. Um, you'll notice that all of those guys, uh, I mean, uh, especially Kentucky and LSU, we got some SEC boys. Obviously, SEC defense is what a lot of teams are looking for. Um, I think they have a lot to offer. And my sleeper is, is Dylan Moses out of Bama because I don't know why, but it always feels like Bama linebackers get slept on more than they should because they are the generals of a number one defense. And it's never going to make sense to me that they end up kind of sitting and slipping a little bit at times. So um, Dylan Moses is, I think, going to be one of those guys who's going to be transformative for a team in later rounds. So I don't know. I, I, I feel, feel good about his, his prospects. So where, if you got to put Micah Parsons on a team tomorrow and it wasn't the giants, mm -hmm. where would you put him? And you think he'd have the biggest impact? Where would I put him? And I think I had, he have the biggest impact. Let me go ahead and look at the draft order again, real quick. If he is available, um, and they don't trade for Deshaun Watson, I think he'd be a great pick in Carolina to kind of flush out their defense. Um, but this is the thing that's going to hurt the most to say is I think he would be excellent in Dallas. Um, because he, that, that's the thing that they had with all of the injuries that happened with Sean Lee is it seems like they just kind of didn't have that leadership. I mean, I know they do have Leighton Vander Esch who also missed 
pretty much all last year due to injury. But, um, you know, I think he could end up being one of those guys partnering the two of them together could be very, very huge. Um, and, and that could also help give Dallas a pretty dominant defense, which they already have a good defense. Um, they just had a really bad offense losing Dak Prescott and losing faith in Zeke for a little bit this year. Um, so if they could, you know, make that defense unstoppable, then I'd be, I'd be all on board with it. Um, I mean, but I also look at teams like San Francisco and the chargers giving him like a Bosa brother to work with could also be really cool. How is he in coverage? It seems like he's pretty good in coverage. Like he, like I said, he's very much a zone spy kind of guy. Um, so he, from what I understand watching it, he's a, uh, very, very drilled into what the quarterback's doing. So he's got a very good eye for, you know, intercepting his reads and directing people on where they need to be. So he might not even necessarily be the guy that's getting the breakup or getting the pick, but making sure that his teammates are there to make that, which I think is one of the best qualities that you can have in a linebacker is someone who's, who would rather go ahead and lead in that manner than take an accolade for himself, you know? So I think that, like I said, Luke Keekley, Derek Brooks type could be his ceiling. Which is high praise. Mm -hmm. Luke Keekley gone too soon. Yeah. He's just retired, but still it was, it was always a treat watching that guy play football. Never forget. Never, never forget. Uh, Last we got offensive line. Yeah. So obviously offensive line, we pretty much kind of combined it together for all positions. We didn't really, Mm -hmm. uh, put anything together, but like offensive line, uh, I feel like Peeney Sewell is pretty much from Oregon is the number one consensus. Rashawn Slater though, tackle from Northwestern, I think is pretty close. Um, and then I have Christian Darosoff from Virginia tech, Jalen Mayfield, uh, from Michigan and Elijah Vera Tucker from USC, who is a guard. Uh, everyone else that I have listed here is a tackle. Um, obviously tackles are more of a hot commodity, getting a big boy on the outside, that can do the dirty work is kind of the most important thing that you can do for your quarterback, uh, whether it be their strong side or their blind side, you know, uh, Sandra Bullock. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Funny fact, fun fact. Um, her character, uh, the, the woman in real life, her son just got, became a, a director of football operations for UCF. Oh, that's badass. Yeah. Kind of cool. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, realistically, um, Sewell and Slater to me are the, the two guys that are head and shoulders above everybody else. Those are the two guys that I 100% see going in the first round, uh, Sewell going in the top 10 Slater, possibly in the top 15 at the, at, at, at least the other ones, I'm a little bit less sure if they go top 20, top 25, um, but, uh, I mean, very possible to see them go in there because, again, it's a need. Every team needs offensive line. Um, like, the Giants go ahead and draft offensive line this year. I'm going to be pissed, but at the same time, I'm going to be like, well, we probably need it still because there's always injuries. There's always a need for depth. Um, and, and if you have the ability to get yourself someone who's talented, big, and strong and can move, you want to do it. Um Look at it with Tristan Wirfs in Tampa. Literally got a Super Bowl his first year in the NFL because he was that solid as a tackle. Um, so I have to wait and see. And then I put uh, James Hudson from Cincinnati as a, as my sleeper. Uh, just being a UCF guy, I watched a lot of American Athletic Conference football. Cincinnati bullied people, man. Um, I think that he, you know a lot of people from that Cincinnati team do have decent NFL prospects. Um, so I, I'm, I'd be really curious to see how he would do at the next level. And I think, uh, even though he might go a little bit later in rounds, I think he'll, he'll be a pretty big pickup. Nice. Well, with that being said, uh, we're going to wrap here. Is there anything you would like to, to throw out to the people that maybe we didn't touch on? I mean, nothing that I can think of, but, uh, if you have strong opinions on Dave Gettleman, let me know. I'm really, <laughs> I'm really here to hear them. Comment section, baby. We are hit, listening and commenting back. Hit that comment box on what Dave Gettleman also stinks at. <laughs> Most things. Um, Bocce well, ball. <laughs> he's definitely a shuffleboard shit player. 
Oh, um, for sure. <laughs> you can tell. Uh, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, again, thank you for listening to Going For It. Uh, we'll be back with some more episodes. I'm going to try and crank out one every day, and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, go Giants, and yeah. we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Thanks, guys.